AI has a ton of hype, and the supporting fans are getting borderline ridiculous. It's more profound than fire. Or... Makes money using only AI. I certainly think that this is like a revolutionary moment in technology. But what about the reasons why AI might fail to live up to the hype? Large language models have no concept of truth. I'm on a mission to figure out how businesses will create more value with AI, but I don't want to fall into the fanboy trap one-sided thinking, or lose my fresh perspective. I decided to go on a hunt to find the top reasons why AI won't work. I challenged myself to see if my opinions would change. So let's go find out. Now, I'm not talking about the AI doomers or trying to guess why AGI isn't possible. What happens if we build something smarter than us that we understand that poorly? What I'm talking about is the argument for why AI won't provide more value in the workplace. But what tipped me over the edge to do this? In a recent article, Gary Marcus goes as far as to say, what if AI turned out to be a dud? I sent out tweets asking others why they thought AI may not work. I even asked ChatGPT to give me some ideas. I consolidated them and picked the ones that I thought had the strongest arguments. Let's talk about the four reasons why AI could fail. Reason one, hallucinations stop progress. AI hallucinations. In his article, Gary Marcus points out, there's no reason to think that the hallucination problem will be solved soon. Emily Bender, linguistics professor at the University of Washington, goes as far as to say, this isn't fixable. The hallucination problem refers to when language models confidently make up information, which is pretty hard for the user to know that it's happening. Now, sometimes this is a feature, like when you're writing a poem about a made up topic that the language model doesn't know about. However, high stakes business decisions rely on trusted information. It's not great when the language model makes up information about a sales call you just had. Or what about when that lawyer submitted a bogus case law and he actually got caught? If hallucinations continue to be a problem, then businesses will opt out of Gen AI tools altogether. I agree. This is a big problem and a blocker to wider adoption. If this doesn't get fixed, then yes, of course, generative AI will have an issue. However, the answer is a mix of responsible AI use and tooling. You should always verify that any source you're using is true. The theme of AI in 2023 is to have it augment your work, not replace it. As for tooling, a lot of incredible people are working on the hallucination problem. Things like more advanced retrieval methods, like Langchain's parent document retriever, or Llama Index's retrieval agents, or better yet, guardrails for chatbots like NVIDIA's Nemo. Reason number two, models are too complex to be reliable. As AI systems become more complex, their behaviors can become more unpredictable. Do we understand everything about why the model does one thing and not one other thing? Certainly not. A member of OpenAI's technical staff also said they aren't sure why ChatGPT doesn't produce the same output each time, or another way, why it's not deterministic. You see, deterministic code is nice because you can, in theory, debug and trace why an outcome happened. Non-deterministic code leads to unintended consequences or errors, and a load-bearing process for a business can't afford to be undebuggable. If these issues aren't addressed, businesses may see AI as a liability as opposed to an asset. Determinism is one of the utmost important features of traditional programming. If you shake that foundation, you shake everything else that comes downstream. In addition to this, OpenAI recently released a post on how they're able to explain and score every neuron within GPT-2. This is huge for, as Sam puts it, we are pushing back like the fog of war more and more. It's only a matter of time before they have this capability for later stage GPT models. Lastly, in Darkesh's interview with Dario, the CEO of Anthropic, Dario says the words mechanistic interpretability at least 15 times. I don't know what's going on inside mechanistically, and I think that's the whole point of mechanistic interpretability. This is the ability to peek into the model and understand what's happening. After a quick break, we're gonna review two more reasons why AI could fail, and I'll share whether or not my views on AI have actually changed. If you've been following me for a while, you know how much I love easy to set up and out of the box functionality in just a few lines of code, which is why I wanna tell you about today's sponsor, Single Store. Single Store powers fast fast, real-time analytics-powered AI applications. You can easily store vectors for a semantic search, get started in your language of choice, and even expand your data outside of vectors with support for structured, semi-structured, time series, full text, spatial, and key value data. Seriously, if you have a range of data, they can store it. The best part, they even have notebooks directly in the browser that you can connect to your database with. 
No need to hassle with connections. When you get logged on to Single Store, you can get an easy web browser interface, real-time monitoring, and familiar SQL tooling. Single Store makes it easy to get set up. With up to $600 in free credit when you get started, they have integrations right into Langchain and one-on-one -on -one support from one of their experts if you have questions. Single Store is for anyone who's looking to get started with a no-brainer database solution in order to power their AI applications. It's perfect for indie devs, data engineers, and companies looking to explore new data options. It's being used by analytics companies, Fortune 500s, and some of today's biggest consumer apps. That includes DBT for their use of real-time analytics, and Heap, who uses Single Store as the query layer on top of their customer-facing data systems. Single Store is the platform for low latency access to massive data sets. If you're interested in learning more, links in the description. Reason number three, models won't get better. In the same interview with Dario, Darkesh asks, hey, if scaling laws end up plateauing before reaching human level intelligence, what's your explanation for why this would happen? And Dario says, well, we could run out of data, we could run out of compute, or maybe it's that we don't have the right architecture. Maybe this is true. And maybe we're reaching an asymptote of intelligence with GPT models, and they won't actually get better. It's well known that scaling laws are fairly predictable. Predictable to like, sometimes even to several significant figures, which you don't see outside of physics. Companies can simply choose to input more money and get a smarter model. My hypothesis is that they'll continue to do this as long as they see the return on investment. Additionally, the actual language model itself is only one piece in the larger orchestration of tools. It's been amazing to see the advancements in various areas, like the Stanford simulation study, or retrieval tools like Metal's embedding platform that reacts to user feedback, or superstructures around the language model like Langchain. Finally, I'll close this counter argument with a question. What do you think is the limiting factor of getting more value from AI? The actual model itself? Or our understanding about how to work with the models that we already have. I'd argue it's more of the latter than we think. Reason number four, advanced prompting is too hard. Most generative AI relies on prompts from a user to perform an action. You can have the best tool in the world, but if you don't give it proper instructions, then it'll just spin in circles. In everyday life, an employee might be able to perfectly articulate themselves to another colleague. However, when it comes to speaking to a language model, it requires a different set of skills. It could be that the barrier to entry for writing clear instructions to a language model is simply too high for the common team member to learn. My take is that we're already seeing a rise in the tide on a workforce's ability to create prompts. In 2023, many people were learning prompting for the first time. ChatGPT is free, so literally anyone can try it out. And as they learned, they shared their thoughts along the way. All those learnings build on top of each other and help the next person ramp up more quickly. I'm also expecting the amount of detail a person will need for their desired output will also go down. Simply, people will get better at articulating themselves. And you'll also need to do less articulation in order to get what you want. Okay, so we reviewed four counter arguments to AI and counters to those counters. I challenged myself to understand the other sides of the argument to see if my mind would change about AI. And did it? No, <laughs> there is way too much value being derived today and I'm having way too much fun. Look, there's no doubt that AI has its challenges right now, but I'd press you to find a new technology that didn't. Most technologies have years of tooling and best practices as their foundation before they get mass adoption. However, mass adoption with AI took two months and we're still building the tools and best practices. We're trying to retroactively fill that gap and there's gonna be growing pains along the way. However, I see too many examples of language models already providing value to not get excited, like creating dynamic interfaces on the fly or automating summaries and meeting notes of sales calls. What about chatbots that allow you to have conversations over massive amounts of data? Oh yeah, and the entire visual generation space for pictures and video. And that's just what's come out in 2023. And while I can't tell what the future is gonna be, I'm excited enough to keep pulling on this thread with you. By the way, if you like this type of content and wanna go on a journey with me to see how AI will play out in business, I sent out my learnings to a small group of email subscribers. Links in the description.